The three-row SUV segment is one of the most hotly contested in the industry, and it's growing in more ways than one. The 2024 Grand Highlander gets the grand name and convention not for its style or features, but because it offers more space for people and cargo inside its elongated body, with most of the stretch going to a roomy third row. Prior to the redesign, the Pilot was one of the more boring SUVs suffering from drab interior and weird-looking exterior. The 2023 model overhaul addresses those gripes, introducing a more cohesive package to better compete in its segment. In this video, we'll compare both SUVs' designs inside and out, pricing, and how they drive. So, without any further ado, let's get into it. The Grand Highlander is technically the sixth three-row SUV in Toyota's lineup, and while it's not the worst looking, it certainly isn't the best looking SUV in the class. The low grille seems too big and takes up a ton of real estate on the front end, and without the limited or platinum model's 20-inch wheels, the base model's 18 inches make it look very odd. That said, the headlights and taillights are sharp, the front bumper has great angles, and there is a silver trim piece just above the upper grille that ties the whole look together. The muscular and athletic side profile is sleek and dynamic, but is surprisingly devoid of any major swoop in lines or creases. Around the back, LED taillights extend into the tailgate, which is handsomely sculpted, and dual real exhaust outlets are integrated into the rear bumper, adding a touch of sportiness to the design. After looking more or less the same for six years, the Pilot has finally been completely redesigned for 2023. In fact, even the platform it rides on is brand new. The design language is similar to that of the new Honda CR-V that launched last year, with a towering hood, large grille, sleek headlights, and a strong belt line that gives it a more powerful stance. The side profile is muscular and athletic, almost identical to that of the Grand Highlander, and features a couple of lines and creases as opposed to Toyota's bulbous look, accentuating the vehicle's length. At the rear, the changes are extremely effective in refining the pilot's style. The most obvious change is the larger pilot lettering now positioned in the center of the lift gate, just below the Honda logo, in addition to the fake exhaust finishers and rear diffuser. Overall, this new pilot is much more athletic than its rounder predecessor. It's also 3.4 inches longer, over an inch wider, and an inch taller, making it roughly the same size of the Grand Highlander. Jumping inside, the Grand Highlander's interior is mostly great. The Platinum model uses plenty of high-quality leather, while the base XLE opts for pleather instead. With the former, the seats, door panels, center console, and dash are all covered in genuine stuff, even higher up where most people won't usually touch. And Toyota opted for rubberized buttons and controls instead of metal dials common in other SUVs. The only questionable thing is the interior trim options. Both the faux wood and geometric black plastic look and feel cheap for an otherwise premium cabin. Every Grand Highlander gets a standard 12.3-inch touchscreen with Toyota's audio multimedia system. The home screen is clean, responses are smartphone quick, and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto may connect in your own device a breeze. The limited and platinum models boast a bigger 12.3-inch digital instrument cluster as opposed to the base 7-inch unit. But it's way too busy. Speed, maps, road signs, and the power delivery on the hybrid model all clutter up the cluster to an annoying level. As for the Pilot, the dated-looking interior of the 3rd gen is gone, and it now steps into 2023 with fresh lines, new tech, and a more thoughtful and family-friendly cabin. If you've been in a new CRV, its layout and design will be fairly familiar. The look is clean and uncomplicated, the dash is low and aids in both visibility and making the cabin feel spacious. All the buttons and knobs feel high quality with tight solid action, whether it's a turn signal stock or the highly welcome climate control dials. There is an abundance of premium materials up front, although the plastics do get worse as you move back. The biggest letdown in the Pilot is that the LX and Sport trims get a tiny 7-inch screen, and even the upgraded 9-inch touchscreen is way too small by today's standards. The infotainment system itself isn't as advanced as the one in the Grand Highlander, but it is better than the outgoing model, featuring large, attractive, and easy-to-press icons, there are fewer layers of menus, and far faster reactions. It's a system that's actually nice to use. The 10.2-inch digital cluster exclusive to the Elite is cool to look at, but doesn't offer much in the way of additional functionality. As for passenger and cargo space, the Grand Highlander seats are soft with solid upholstery and plenty of space in every direction for the front two rows. Climbing to the second row and the captain's chairs suffer from somewhat limited support, especially for tall passengers, but this space is good for the class. 
Third row access is impressively easy with the sliding seats and is big enough for two adults to sit back there comfortably for long periods of time, thanks to above average headroom and legroom. As for cargo space, it boasts the second best cargo space behind the third row, a healthy 20.6 cubic feet. Fold it and you get 57.9 cubes, and with all the seats down, you get a best-in-class 97.5 cubes. As for the pilot, its wheelbase is two inches shorter than the Toyota, though they are similar in overall length. The front occupants have plenty of room length and height-wise, but hip room is noticeably better compared to the Grand Highlander. The second row offers 1.3 inches extra legroom than the Toyota, with a nifty metal seat that can be removed and stored in the trunk. Legroom in the pilot's third row grew to a max of 32.5 inches, making it even friendlier for bigger teens and adults, even in the 6 foot plus category. As for cargo space, behind the third row there is 18.6 cubic feet, with the third row folded, space grows to 48.5 cubic feet, or 85 cubes with the second row folded, which makes it smaller than the Toyota across the board. When it comes to pricing, to get a Grand Highlander you will be paying a premium. The base XLE model starts at $44,400, which is almost $7,000 more than the base Honda Pilot. Next is limited at around $49,000 and platinum at $54,900. All wheel drive is an extra $1,100. If you want the hybrid model, it starts at $46,000 with the rest of the trim levels going up from there. As for the Honda, the 2023 Pilot ADX starts at $37,600 and comes standard with LED headlights and taillights, 18-inch alloy wheels, and 3-zone climate control. The Sport is $40,800, and if you want the larger infotainment system, opt for the EXL for $43,600, while the top-of-the-line Elite trim goes for $53,700. When it comes to driving and handling, the Grand Highlander offers three engine options, but the hybrid max powertrain might be the best option in the entire class. It combines the same turbo charge from the base model with a battery pack and motors on each axle, giving this version a healthy 362 horsepower and 400 pound feet. And this combination makes it surprisingly fast, almost like a RAV4 Prime without the plug. It hustles up hilly roads that can challenge the base gas model without breaking a sweat. The base Grand Highlander uses an unobtrusive 8-speed automatic and the hybrid gets a CVT. Strangely though, the hybrid Max uses an old-school 6-speed auto that definitely feels clunkier than the better 8-speed. Even with all that heavy battery on board, the Grand Highlander handles well for the 3-row SUV. The suspension borders on stiff compared to some of the softer SUVs in its segment, but it makes up for that slight rigidity with excellent cornerability. The perfectly weighted steering delivers just enough road feel, while there is a shockingly minimal amount of body roll, especially for such a big SUV. As for Honda, the 2023 Pilot is offered with a single V6 engine option that may appear to have been carried over from 2022, but it's in fact a new 3.5-liter dual overhead camshaft producing 285 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. A 10-speed automatic is paired with paddle shifters for manual control. As good as the engine and transmission pair, they are not able to overcome the pilot's weight. This 2023 model weighs about 300 pounds more than the 2019 Pilot Elite and takes 6.9 seconds to reach 60 miles per hour, making it more than half a second slower. That extra mass also lengthens the pilot's stop in distance from 60 miles per hour by 6 feet relative to the 2019 version. The Honda Pilot has always been popular for its comfortable ride, but the 2023 model builds on that further. The updated chassis is taut and refined, with little body roll despite the big boxy body. Honda's tuning of the suspension also improved the ride, which absorbs bumps with ease. One of the biggest changes is the reduction of in-cabin noise. With more sound insulation, the pilot tackles tire and wind noise easily, though engine noise is still noticeable. So, which one should you choose? Well, I think it's really simple. Considering how both SUVs offer a fairly comparable package, and if the inferior infotainment system on the Pilot doesn't bother you, then you should get a similarly equipped Honda Pilot and save thousands compared to the Grand Highlander.